Hey, it's Francis Lamb, host of The Splendid Table. Join us for a special live taping of our show where I'll be talking to some of Orange County's culinary stars. It's February 4th at South Coast Rep. Tickets at laist.com slash events. Can't wait to see you. LAist Studios. Today on the LA Report. Winter storm brings low elevation snow to the Southland and the drives may be particularly treacherous on interstates through the mountain passes. The first snowpack survey of the season in the Sierra is done and spoiler alert. It's really still too early to determine what kind of year we'll have in terms of wet or dry. And hear how to take advantage of LA's free curbside disposal of Christmas trees. Good morning, it's Wednesday, January 3rd. I'm Suzanne Watley, and you're listening to the LA Report from LAS 89.3. The cold storm moving into Southern California is bringing rain and low elevation snow and bringing lowland temperatures down to well below normal, mid 50s to low 60s this afternoon. There's a winter weather advisory posted by the National Weather Service for today and tonight. It extends from the Santa Barbara County Interior Mountains into the counties of Ventura and Los Angeles and east to the mountains in Riverside and San Bernardino counties. The snow level could be as low as 4,000 feet tonight, including along Interstate 5 through the Tejon Pass, where travel could become very difficult amid snow, ice, and gusty winds. Snow accumulations of 3 to 6 inches are likely, with some higher elevation spots getting as much as 8 inches. The season's first official snow survey in the Sierra Nevada revealed seven and a half inches of snow depth and a snow water equivalent of three inches at Phillips Station. That's 30 percent of average for the location to date. The Department of Water Resources uses the snow water amounts to measure how much runoff the state can expect to have to refill reservoirs and supply water once all the snow melts in the spring and summer. Sean de Guzman is the manager of the snow surveys and water supply forecasting. It's really still too early to determine what kind of year we'll have in terms of wet or dry. Um, And there can be so many things that happen with our storm systems between now and April when we should see our peak snowpack. De Guzman says that state reservoirs are still well above average right now, thanks to last year's wet winter. As for what to expect later this year, the Climate Prediction Center says conditions for this month, next month, and March show an increased chance of above normal precipitation. The Compton Courthouse has been shut down because of damage from a burst water pipe. Court officials say the rupture happened over the weekend and the flooding has cut off access to the lobby, elevators and stairwells. They say that people with matters pending at the courthouse can go online to check the status at lacourt.org. Coming up, a look ahead at some challenging re-election campaigns in Los Angeles and an Orange County City's attempt to more closely monitor who votes in elections. Hi, it's Suzanne Watley. The L.A. Report is perfect for getting you a quick hit of the day's top stories. For a deeper and broader look at the news, join me for NPR's Morning Edition. Starting at 5 a.m., we get you the day's breaking news stories, local, national, and worldwide, and give you a little joy and delight to start your day right. Morning Edition, weekdays from 5 to 9 on the radio at LAist 89.3 and on the LAist app. Hey, it's Francis Lamb, host of The Splendid Table. Our show is all about the intersection of food and life, and we're heading to Southern California. Elias is hosting a special live taping of our show in Orange County, where we'll have a chance to talk to some of the stars of the OC's vibrant food scene. And after the show, we'll all get a bite of something delicious to eat. So join us February 4th at South Coast Rep. Get your tickets now at elias.com slash events. Back now to the L.A. report. 2024 is going to be a big election year. In Los Angeles, seven city council seats are up for grabs. Some of the most notable races include Councilmember Kevin DeLeon's re-election bid. He's been under fire since the City Hall tape leak scandal in which he and other council members were caught on tape making racist, anti-immigrant, and homophobic comments. L.A.'s civics and democracy correspondent Frank Stoltz says DeLeon faces an uphill fight to keep his District 14 seat. 
he did not resign, you know, despite despite these protesters shutting down the city council and him really not even able to attend council meetings, hiding in the back room of the city council, casting votes from this little ante room because he couldn't show his face on the floor. But he stuck it out. And now he's got seven challengers. And uh, there's you know a very good chance that he'll either be forced into a runoff or maybe he won't even make the runoff. Other races to watch are freshman council member Nithya Rock who now has a district that is 40% changed from the one she ran in four years ago because of redistricting. Meanwhile, Heather Hutt will be on the ballot for the first time. She was appointed to replace Mark Ridley Thomas. Frank is also keeping an eye on George Gascon's re-election campaign and notes that the district attorney also faces a tough fight. What we hear from the 11 candidates that have filed against him, they're all saying, look, the reason for the increase in crime is George Gascon. That's a false narrative. We've seen an increase in crime across California uh, with DAs who are conservative and DAs who are more liberal. Um, So it's, it's not exactly correct to hang it on George Gascon. But, you know, he presents himself as a reformer, not somebody who's going to be tough. Frank says the March primary is almost certain to lead to a runoff for that office in November. Some of the people running against Gascon include the vice president of L.A.'s Association of Deputy District Attorneys, Eric Sedal, and Republican Nathan Hockman, who ran for California Attorney General in 2022 and lost. Meanwhile, LAist Orange County correspondent Jill Rep Logal says that here in the new year, she'll be watching how some big and sometimes radical decisions by local governments play out. In Huntington Beach, residents will vote on a city charter amendment in March that would allow the city to require voter ID and monitor ballot drop boxes. Both things blatantly contradict state law. I'll also be watching Huntington Beach's new policy to have kids' library books screened by a committee selected by the mostly conservative city council. Jill also wants to hear your ideas for things that she should be covering in Orange County. You can go to our website, laist.com, and reach out to her via that. Do you still have your Christmas tree up? If you're a City of Los Angeles resident looking to dispose of old Tannenbaum, you can request curbside pickup for free by going online to the L.A. City website and clicking on My L.A. 311. You can also call the Environment and Sanitation Department or go online to LACitySan.org, where you can also find information on where to drop off a tree. Just make sure you remove all the decorations, including tinsel, and remove those tree stands. Improper disposal of trees can result in a fire risk. Thank you for listening to the LA Report. You can read more news at laist.com or listen live anytime on the LAist app or on the radio at 89.3 FM. The AM edition is hosted and produced by me, Suzanne Watley, with assistance from producer Tyler Wayne. Our engineer is Federico Garcia Rodriguez. Catherine Mailhouse is the Director of Content Development. LAist's Executive Editor is Megan Garvey. Original music by Scott Kelly. Check back here at 4 for the PM edition. Listeners like you help make the LA Report possible. Please donate at laist.com slash join. And the LA Report is supported by Gordon and Donna Crawford, who believe quality journalism makes Southern California a better place to live.